When I think about how A-list Hollywood celebrities, specifically iconic women over 40, even over 35, do their makeup for events, it doesn't have to be a red carpet event, it can be anything. There's a specific look that most of them have that's quite different from the younger set. There's an almost ethereal radiance to their skin. Their eyes are enhanced, but not overdone. You usually don't see heavy black winged liner, big thick false lashes. Now most do have a team of makeup artists, but I started thinking when we have events, whether they're casual or dressy, we tend to want to do a little bit more, more foundation, more to our eyes, more of everything. And as we get older, more is not always better. It's not always more flattering. Sometimes pulling back, simplifying things is actually more flattering. So I've been wearing this look or a similar type of look quite often lately, which includes enhanced but not overdone eyes. My skin looks like skin. It doesn't look like I'm wearing foundation. I have a glow, a radiance to my skin that I'm hoping you can see on camera. So I thought today I would show you how I got this look, some things I've done, why I do them the way I do. This is a combo video today. I was doing one brand makeup videos pretty regularly for a while and paused them and am bringing them back today. You can of course use whatever makeup you have on hand to follow along and recreate this look. I am going all luxury with Shantikai, who has given me a code just for you. You can save 15% across their website with my code STEPH15. And I'm partnering with them today for this video to share with you what you get from their products. You can see how they apply, what they look like, and decide what might work for you. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Let's go ahead and get into what I did to get this look. I do foundation roundups quite frequently where I test out foundations for mature skin, see how they look, how they apply, how they wear. And Chantecaille Future Skin has been on my list of foundations to try because it's loved by a lot of people. It's Chantecaille's oil-free gel foundation. It's made up of 60% water and it's supposed to look like skin. So I've been playing around with this for a little while now. The shade I have is vanilla. I like to apply it to the back of my hand and just dip this foundation and mask brush right in, which looks kind of small small, but I kind of like to just paint it on. And I find that the texture and density of this brush just melds it with my skin so beautifully. It kind of presses it into my pores and allows me to apply it exactly where I need it without applying too much, which is key for this look. So I'm going to apply it to one half of my face so that you can see the difference with one half to another, the same way I do with my foundation roundups when I'm testing foundation. So you can see I'm just kind of stippling and painting it on and it's really really just evening out my skin. Now, if you do have some red marks that are not being concealed, like I do here, just some imperfections, you can build it up and add more and it blurs those a little bit more, but it doesn't add full, full coverage. It doesn't make things masky looking. This blurs my pores and evens out my redness, evens out my skin tone. I think you can tell from this side of my face to this side, everything still looks like skin. My skin tone, my skin texture, it just looks like beautiful, natural skin. You cannot tell I'm wearing foundation. So I'll even things out on this side really quickly. The other thing that I love is that you have plenty of time to blend it out. It doesn't dry down and set too quickly. I can leave it very, very sheer and conceal where I want or build it up and add a little bit more coverage. Another thing to note that I forgot to say earlier is that it's got aloe and arnica, which helps soothe skin, which is great if you're like me and you have rosacea. And it's got rosemary and green tea, which are rich in antioxidants. So there's some skincare benefits in here too. I don't have concealer under my eyes or anywhere on my face yet, but I feel like you can see how much more smooth and even toned and just perfected my skin looks, yet it still looks completely like skin. If I didn't know better, I wouldn't think I had foundation on my face. I can't believe it's taken me this long to try this foundation. Now I can still see some little imperfections on my face, which makes it even more natural looking. If those bother me, I'll spot conceal them. And I did want to note that I started out with my brows done with their waterproof brow definer in the shade light taupe, which is perfect for my brow shade. Brows are so individual. That's not really part of this look. 
And sometimes I like to have my brows done before I do foundation since our brows are already on our face before we do our makeup. It just looks a little more natural to me. And this does not tend to wipe off when I apply foundation and it looks really natural. I just kept my brows pretty natural to their original shape as much as I can. My brows are very, very uneven and very rarely look perfect, but I did want to let you know they were already applied. Shantikai currently has one concealer, their Le Camouflage Stilo. This has a brush tip. It's moisturizing and made to reflect light, blur imperfections. I have a darker circle on my left side than I do my right side, so you're going to be able to see a little bit of a difference in the two sides. It has an oligo polymer in it to plump the appearance of fine lines, as well as an anti-fatigue complex to lighten the appearance of dark circles and reduce the look of puffiness. Because this concealer has a thinner consistency, I like to let it sit and thicken up a bit before I blend it out. So while that's thickening up, I'm going in with the Next Generation Eye Base in the shade Medium, which I just color on like it's a crayon and gently tap it out with my fingers. You can see how this immediately just camouflages any redness or veins I have on my eyelids. I'm hoping you can see this on camera. It also holds on to your eye products so that they don't crease, they don't migrate during the day. Even after letting that concealer sit for a little bit, it still blends out very easily and you can see that it does brighten. Because this concealer gives light to moderate coverage and is a more brightening concealer, if you have very dark circles or a lot of discoloration or if you just feel like you look extremely tired a lot like I do, you may want to start with a color corrector underneath or do like I'm doing now and just add add a little bit more where you have the most darkness. For me, it's at the deepest point of my tear troughs, my under eye hollows, and sometimes I even add more at the outer corner of my eye where I have some redness. It layers really well over itself. Jumping in here really quickly, I've completely finished filming and I almost forgot to share with you two skincare products that I've been using and just wanted to share with you because they've worked well for my sensitive skin. So this is the oil-free balancing moisturizer and this is the Stress Repair Concentrate Plus Eye Cream. If you have sensitive skin, and I would say oily combination or normal skin, this moisturizer is really great to use in the morning, or it has been for me anyway. I had a really bad rosacea flare up going on from some other products I had been testing, and this really helped calm and soothe my skin. The consistency is lightweight, kind of lotion-y. It's got botanical extracts, marine postbiotics, and plant stem cell extracts that help maintain and boost your skin's moisture, and it helps refine the look of pores and improve your skin tone. So this is their best-selling eye cream cream. It's got a very creamy consistency. It has peptides which help with fine lines and wrinkles and it's also got deep puffing botanicals. It's also got caffeine so it's just a good rich eye cream that I only need a teeny teeny tiny bit of. So I feel like this could last you forever. I just wanted to jump in here and let you know if you've been curious about their skincare at all. These are two products that I've been trying out and so far so good. Next up I'm setting my under eyes and my face with the towel free loose powder. This is such a finely milled beautiful powder. It gives a very soft matte finish. It's got some light reflective pigments in it that help camouflage imperfections and blur. It doesn't settle into fine lines. This is so flattering and in addition to being talc free it's also oil free and just patting it in gently until it starts to disappear. This really fuses it with my skin and makes it look like skin as opposed to just dusting it over my face. It also keeps the shine away longer. It just gives me the most natural finish to my skin. I just had to pause this video and run downstairs and get a box of band-aids and some gauze because I sliced my finger during the powder segment somehow and it just will not stop bleeding. I do not know what happened. So I will admit I was a little skeptical when I got my real bronze in the shade go up because this just does not look like a bronzer shade that would work for me. However, this is one of the most buildable, flattering bronzers. I was very surprised. It looks like it's going to go on so deep and be really overwhelming and overpowering, but I mean, I don't have to tap my brush off. I'm going straight in from here. I'm just going to show you. I'm not tapping my brush off into my face. I mean, look at that. Look at how easily that applies and how it added this natural amount of color. This is a bronzer that you can apply in a pinch if you're in a hurry. You could definitely contour with if you wanted to go a little heavier around the perimeter of your forehead your cheekbones and keep it lighter around the center but you see how that's building and it's just effortless. It's a shade you could use all over your face if you're just feeling a little bit pale and you just want a little bit more color and it's a shade that you can double up and use as 
blush if you want to. Okay, so if I wasn't talking, I could have applied that in no time at all. Before moving forward with the rest of my face, I'm gonna go ahead and do my eyes because I feel like this La Chrome Luxe Eye Duo in Tibet is kind of the star of the show. It is not just for nighttime. This is beautiful for any time of day because it's so versatile. You can go more dramatic with these or keep them a little bit more subtle depending on application. You can use them wet or dry, apply them with any type of brush. You can also use the included applicators. There's a silicone applicator here and then there's your traditional sponge tip applicator you can use as well. So we have this shimmering platinum which I think has a little bit of taupiness to it and a slate gray with a little bit of pearl. I'm going to start with this lighter shade and I'm going to do something a little bit unusual which I think is going to help those of you out with hooded eyes, with downturned eyes, and start with my lower lash line. I'm going to take this slanted eye brush along the outer half of my lower lash line. I'm looking straight ahead and I'm just pressing it in and I'm extending that lower lash line angle a little bit past the corner of my eye. Even if I have a crease there, this gives me a little bit of sheen, a little bit of oomph along that lower lash line, but it doesn't make it heavy. It's going to help my eyes look a little bit bigger, a little bit more open because our eyes can start to look a little bit smaller as we get a little bit older. And continuing that line a little bit past the corner of your eye will make your eyes look more lifted and it will keep your upper lid eyeshadow from going below that point. It's kind of like a reference line so that you don't go below that line and make your eyes look more droopy. You can apply it with a brush if you want a sheer application or you can apply it with your finger wet or dry like I am here. I'm applying the light shade dry today with my finger and you can see how beautiful it turns out. Normally I like to set my eyeshadow primer but not with these. I really like the way these look wet but not overly metallic directly over eyeshadow primer before setting it with powder. Now that that shadow is applied, I'm going to go ahead and set from my crease to my brow bone with translucent powder. That will help with something a little bit later. Now I'm taking the deeper shade on an eye blending brush and tapping it along my upper lash line as well as along that little flick line we made in the beginning and along the outer third. I'm kind of just freehanding this to keep the lift looking in the mirror to make sure things look as even as they possibly can and that they look lifted. I'm not doing anything in the crease. I'm keeping it very simple. If you feel like the light shade gave you the look you wanted, you don't even need to add this darker shade. I just really like the depth that it gives. I don't really want heavy eyeliner, but I do want a little bit of a lift. I also don't want to see a skin between my eyelashes. Now I find that going in just straight with a black pencil gives me a kind of a harsher look than what I'm going for here. So I like to swipe my eyeliner brush into the black pencil and then press it along my lash line. I cover a wider surface area that way and it works so much better for my sensitive eyes. It just doesn't bother them at all. And I can also kind of reshape my eye a little bit. My outer corner kind of points downward. It doesn't have that upward tilt to it like we created earlier. So on a smaller scale, I can make a tiny little flick and then just kind of fill in with the brush and it almost makes my eye shape look a little bit different. And that process for me is just easier using a brush. This eyeliner gives me time to work with it using that method and it stays budge proof all day. It's time for blush, which we're going to add in a couple of spots, but I did go ahead and put on the lip definer in the shade natural. My lips were just looking really pale. And sometimes that helps me visualize how much blush I need to, if I already have a little bit of color on my lips. So the blush that I'm going in with today is the cheek shade in laughter. And it's got this really pretty coral pattern on it. And I would say it's a soft peachy pink coral shade. I'm concentrating more on the tops of the apples of my cheeks and the tops of my cheekbones to keep that lift to my face. I'm also adding this in my crease and transition very lightly just to kind of give an overall cohesive look and to add a little bit more of that ethereal glow. It may be almost undetectable, but there's something very harmonious about balancing your cheeks with your eyes. Everything's starting to come together. We're not quite there yet, but almost. However, I did apply the Fossil's Longest Lash Mascara after curling my lashes. Curling your lashes is so important for giving that lifted look to your eyes, especially for those of us that are over 40. This mascara is really nice for volume and length. It's buildable, it doesn't flake, it doesn't smudge, and it's very black, as I think you can see, but it's not overwhelming. Even with my coloring, I don't feel like I have too much black going on around my eyes. So this is a product that I was not sure if I even liked it when I first got it. This is the Lotus 
Radiance highlighter. I just thought it was a little bit lackluster maybe, but the more I played around with it, the more it grew on me because it is so subtle and natural looking. And I'm beginning to realize that is what this brand is all about, about enhancing our natural beauty. And as I get older, that's what I want to do. So do you see how that just enhanced and brought out the inner corner of my eye and my brow bone with just a simple swipe of my finger? And yet there's no sparkle, no glimmer whatsoever. It just does its job so beautifully. This is perfect for those of you who are a little bit scared of highlighter. I've never been one to use highlighter on my upper lip or on my nose because I always feel like they look very obvious. Now I'm applying it here. However, I do want to show you since we are looking at various products from this brand, the Perfect Blur Finishing Powder in shade light medium. If you're a subscriber of mine, you know how I feel about finishing powder. I'm a huge fan for completing your makeup look and just giving you that airbrushed finish. It just helps diffuse everything and make everything look so much more perfected. It kind of gives you that candlelit glow that you wouldn't have otherwise if you didn't use it. It can also blur harsh lines and tame down any overdone blush, contour, or bronzer and minimize pores and help your makeup last longer if you're not one to really be all about setting spray. Because I added finishing powder, I wanted to top my cheeks off with a little bit more of the Lotus Radiance Highlighter. I actually feel like it's pretty key for this type of glowy, radiant, flattering look. It just adds just enough and can't be overdone, really. I'm really surprised at how much I ended up loving this. I also applied my lips. The shade that I used is Yarrow. It's this really pretty nude peachy pink that is apparently limited edition. So if you're catching this video and it is not around for some reason, I have a comparable shade in their lip veil, the shade Honey Pot, which I've actually had for some time. So here we have Yarrow and here we have Lip Veil. Both formulas are incredibly hydrating and very flattering. I think Yarrow has a little bit more sheen. It's a tad lighter, but they're both beautiful. This isn't a complicated look. It's not the most original out there look, but when I first put it together and was thinking about what makes it, I started thinking how appropriate and flattering it is for those of us over 40 and older who don't want to wear heavy foundation, heavy eyes, but still want something a little special for whatever occasion is going on. And this is all about enhancing your skin and doing something a little bit special on the eyes that's not too over the top and of course adapting it for yourself. I mean, I feel like you could truly wear this to a daytime event or a nighttime event as is, or you could amp it up. And it's absolutely beautiful either way. It just turned out to be a look that I'm really enjoying and I am wearing this holiday season quite often. I hope you found this helpful and informative. I enjoyed doing it and don't forget to use my code STEPH15 for 15% off site wide. If you're shopping for holiday gifts or want anything before Christmas, the ordering deadlines are December 19th for US, December 14th for Canada to get your holiday shopping done from the website. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already. I'll see you next time. Bye.